What is going on guys and girls? In today's video, I'll be going over some chat GPT SEO secrets to help you outrank your competitors and rank your blog posts or your articles on the first page of Google. So we'll be going over four secrets that I've used and I found that really helps um, move the ball when it comes to ranking on Google when using chat GPT. So the first thing that you need to do before even writing your content is making sure you're doing an in-depth content gap analysis of where your competitors are, where your article is, and you want to figure out how you can get your article as close as possible to the top ranked blog post for that specific keyword that you're going after. So let's say, for example, I wanted to rank for the keyword how to make money on Etsy. I would first start by searching that up on Google and I'm going to go through some of the top ranked blog posts um, for this specific keyword. So let's say we wanted to duplicate what Printful has done. We don't want to copy them necessarily, but we want to take the best practices that they have included within their articles and use that um, as a reference for us to um, when we're writing our own article. So the great thing about ChatGPT is that you don't have to do this manually. We can just go ahead and copy the URL, head back over to ChatGPT. I've already ran this prompt, but I'm using GPT-4 with the plugins enabled. I'm using the WebPilot plugin and the SEO plugins. So what I did was I first asked ChatGPT to do a content gap analysis of this competitor blog post, but I told it to be specific and include a long detailed list of main keywords, related keywords, LSI keywords, topics and questions that the competitor has included within their article. So we can see here it used the SEO core AI, but that didn't work. So it had to end up using the SEO assistant. So that's why I enable all three of them just to make sure if it can't use one, it will use the other um, plugin. So below we were able to get the main topics, why sell on Etsy, what types of products you can sell, how to set up your Etsy shop and so on. We also get the main keywords, Etsy shop, sell on Etsy, taxes and fees and so on. We get some related keywords, some LSI keywords, and we get some questions that people may ask if they wanted to know more about how to make money on Etsy. So why should you consider selling? What types of products are most popular and so on? So this is just for one competitor blog post. I would repeat this process for another um, blog post, at least three or four, so that you're getting a real comprehensive list of keywords that these um, blog posts have included within their articles. And also, if you'd like me to create you a free article of your choice, check out the link in the description below this video. So again, I would copy over a competitor blog post. I'm going to change the URL. So I've replaced the URL with the new URL and I've um, asked it to do exactly the same thing. So again, we're going to get a list of keywords um, and topics that we can use within our own content to make sure that we're hitting all of the marks that we need to hit when creating this article. So again, just repeat that process to get as many keywords as you can. And then you could also ask it to give you improvements that you need to um, include within your articles to rank higher. So not only are you going to get keywords, you're also going to get um, metrics and things that you need to do to outrank your competitors. So for example, we um, get a recommendation here about content quality, about user engagement, about updating regularly, backlinks, meta description, page speed, images, and so on. So again, it will do a content analysis of your competitor, give you recommendations that you need to include to get as close as possible or to even create a much better article than the top ranked blog post. The second tip is to improve your prompting because if you're able to prompt better, then that means you'll be able to get much better outputs, which will mean you will create much higher quality content that will be more likely to rank on Google. So when it comes to writing SEO optimized content using ChatGPT, I recommend using the playground mode. If you haven't used the playground mode, it's essentially the back end of ChatGPT. You have a lot more customization options when using the playground mode. And I follow a very simple three-step approach. The first step is that you need to prime your AI. So essentially you need to tell the AI exactly what you'll be creating. In this example, we're trying to rank for the keyword, how to make money on Etsy. So a way in which you can prime the AI is by telling the AI that you're an expert blog post writer. You specialize in writing, engaging, informative, and SEO optimized blog posts about Etsy. So what we're doing here is just telling the AI exactly what it needs to get done. So it knows the objective so that we're able to get much better outputs. The second step when creating SEO optimized content using the playground mode is to not generate the full article right away. It's to generate the outline first. So usually what I would tell the AI to do is to create an outline based upon that keyword and then um, 
include a outline that is comprehensive and detailed and includes every single question or topic a person may have about that keyword okay so now that we have our prompt let's go ahead and submit this and we're using gpt4 because i find you're able to get much better outputs when using gpt4 compared to any other uh, model so while that's loading up, what I also like to do is extract the outlines from the top ranked blog post. The reason why I like extracting the blog post outline is because we can then take that outline and combine it with the outline that we get back from ChatGPT here. So we see here we got a pretty good outline, but again, it's not really SEO optimized because we haven't even included the keywords or anything of that sort. So what we're going to do now is include the keywords that we extracted and also the outlines that we extracted from ChatGPT. So first let's copy over the keywords and we're gonna paste it into our message here. And then we're gonna copy over the outline from one of the main articles that's ranking on Google. You can do this for as many articles as you like. So now that we have the keywords and the competitor blog post outline, I'm gonna tell the AI to use that information and combine that with the generated um, outline that you've already created and combine that to create one comprehensive SEO optimized outline. So I've told it to create a new outline using the outline that it's already generated, but combine that with the main topics, keywords, questions, and competitor blog post outline that we listed below. So let's go ahead and submit this and see what type of outline we're able to get back. Okay, so you see here, we now have a much more comprehensive and in-depth and SEO optimized blog post outline. This was the first outline that we got from ChatGPT, but because we've combined it with competitor research, we have a much more um, comprehensive outlines so you have the intro why selling choosing your product setting up your shop marketing the cons exploring conclusion and faq section here so now that what we can do is we can generate our full article so i've told it to write the full article be in depth and write long paragraphs and be very detailed always include lists and tables i'm going to tell it to also write in markdown and I always recommend you include internal links. So if you um, are writing on any type of content, you wanna make sure that you're internally linking um, on your web pages because that's good SEO practices. And if you have any link juice that will be passed on to those um, websites, so are those web pages. So I always recommend telling the AI to interlink throughout the articles with these links. I've just included some example links, but this is where you would include your own links for your websites. So if you have any websites or web pages that are um, related, you'd want to include that here because the AI does do a decent job at interlinking. It is harder to get outbound links um, for random, uh, highly rated domains like Wikipedia and things like that. Sometimes the links can be broken, but if you include a list of internal links, um, the AI will be able to include that within your article. So once that's all set up, you can submit that and the full article uh, will continue writing. So while that article is writing, let's go over some of the other ChatGPT SEO secrets. So number three is to include more engaging content in your articles. So this means that you need to include videos, charts, tables, and links. We've already talked about links, but I highly recommend that you also include videos within your blog post when it is applicable. On my own website, wordrocket.ai, I found that all of my pages that have videos are being indexed very quickly from Google. And I'm also getting some external and additional views from Google videos because sometimes people may search up your keyword and your videos pop up instead of your blog post. So you're able to get traffic from your videos uh, compared to even having to rank for that keyword or that blog post. So I highly recommend if you can include videos into your web pages, you will be able to get indexed a lot quicker. And I find that those um, web pages are able to get more views because again, you have multiple ways in which people can view your content. They can either read your blog post or they can watch your video. And if they watch your video again, that increases the time that they stay on your website, which is also a good ranking factor for Google. So if you can include videos into your blog post. I also recommend including charts and tables within your blog posts. So we have uh, told the AI to include tables and lists within the blog post, but it doesn't, but it's not able to take information or data and create an engaging table. So in my last video, I showed you how to do so. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below this video, but essentially it's very easy to do so. So for example, this blog post is about how to make money on Etsy. Now, if I wanted to create a graph or a table, I would think about what stats or what data I can put into a engaging table about Etsy sellers to be able to include within this blog post. 
So before creating your chart or table, you need to find some data. So I found some data around Etsy sellers and you can just go ahead and copy all of that data, whatever makes the most sense to um, what you're trying to create a chart um, around. Just copy over that data. We're going to paste it into ChatGPT and then we're going to tell ChatGPT to use that information to create a table. So I fed that content into ChatGPT and I do have the plugins enabled. I am using both of the diagram plugins. And what is going to happen is it should take that information and create a nice table for us. Now, one, once that's um, being done, let's go back and take a look at our full article. So we can see here we get a pretty decent article. It's kind of short. I think it's probably a little bit over a thousand words. So if you wanted to, you can always go ahead and extend your article by um, what I like to do is I like to use a GP 3.5 turbo mode and then just tell the AI to expand the article, but keep the same format, list, style of writing, and links, just expand the blog post paragraphs. So again, I'm gonna run this on GPT 3.5 Turbo, 16K mode, and we're gonna be able to get a lot more um, content. And the reason why I like using the GPT 3.5 model after is because GPT-4 does a really good job at setting up the article, and then GPT 3.5 can just follow that same format, but add some more content. And then back over to ChatGPT, we see the bar chart has been created. So here's a bar chart representing the number of Etsy sellers over the years in millions. So we can see the full size chart here. And as you can see, we get a nice chart um, it kind of represents the amount of sellers over the years in millions. So we can see 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, and so on. So this would be a very, very relevant and a very useful chart for this blog post that talks about how to make money on Etsy. We can have a section that talks about the number of Etsy sellers, and then we can embed this into our blog post. In my last video, I showed you guys exactly how to do so. So essentially, you can plug this into your website, and this can be a resource that people would want to link back to. Not only does it make your content a lot more engaging, and it also um, tells Google that this is more unique content, which increases the likeness of ranking on the first page of Google. This could also be a link bait piece of content because other websites within your niche would want to link back to this resource because again, there's not many charts out there like this. So. So including custom tables and charts would highly increase the likeliness that your content will rank on Google and also build more authority in your niche. The fourth tip is to focus on off-page SEO strategies and building backlinks to your content. A lot of times people focus on the on-page SEO aspects of creating content, making sure everything's interlinked, including images and so on. And that while that's great, you also need to focus on building your authority and building your website's DR. If you're able to get backlinks to a specific page, then you have a much higher chance of ranking for that keyword. And that's why I highly recommend that you include videos or you also include tables and charts because those are things that people like to link to. Websites will naturally link to those um, resources over time compared to just a web page with just um, content on it. So you need to focus on building your authority overall for your website, but also on those specific pages. So in this example, if we went ahead and published that blog post about how to make money on Etsy, we also have a video included. We also have a chart included. We can use that chart to reach out to website owners or other blog post owners and tell them like, hey, we've created this chart around Etsy sellers. Would you like to include it within your blog post? And because it's a nice, well done resource and it's engaging, most people would be happy to link back to that chart. So this is the full and expanded blog post that we were able to get back when using GPT 3.5 turbo mode. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this over and convert this into um, readable text. And as you can see, this is a lot longer than the first piece of content that we got back from GPT-4. This looks about 2,400 words, which is really, really good. Very um, good length for a article. Now we're going to actually copy this over and put it all together to let you see what the article will look like. I've also converted the chart into HTML. So again, I'm going to copy over that code and we're going to paste that code into the back end of our website so we can see that within our post. And let's preview exactly what this post will look like. So we see here we have the title and then we have the number of Etsy sellers over the years in millions. So we've included the chart at the top, but you can put this wherever you like on your website or on that web page in particular. But as you can see, it's a very engaging chart. Um, it kind of captures your attention. And you also have the ability to view the full size chart. So if anyone wants to view the full size chart, that's a little bit more engaging, then you can also click on that link below that. And below we have the full article, we have the intro, 
and everything that talks about selling on Etsy. So that's my process and the secrets that I would use to create SEO optimized content that increases the likeness of ranking on the first page of Google. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Let me know if you need clarifications on anything that I mentioned in today's video. As always, I hope that this was useful and you can use these tips when creating content with ChatGPT. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well. And also, if you'd like me to create you a free article of your choice, check out the link in the description below this video.